All right. So um, let's get started. Okay, uh, so uh, we have Q&A open, chat channels are open. Um, we have moderators. Uh, I'm John Barrett, I'm the founder and CEO of June Solutions. Uh, with me, uh, we've got Marco. Uh, he's doing the moderation management. Uh, there he is, handsome Welcome. as ever. Uh, we've also got Tuan, uh, the June CTO on the call. Um, for everyone that is following along, um, you know, uh, feel free to participate. Um, we have uh, an hour to spend together. So um, let's get started. So uh, first, a really big thank you to everyone uh, who is present and uh, for coming to the event. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, special shout out to a couple of our business partners and associates. Um, first, James Van Hess in New York. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, second, uh, Philip Soleil and Jill Bachman. Uh, in Luxembourg, great to have you. Don Kwok in San Diego, California, great to have you. Uh, Danny Fazoli, sorry, I always say your last name wrong in DC, uh, great to have you on the call. Um, another special thanks to our partners, uh, Five Chan, uh, Shane Tunks, I think is on the call. Maybe Eleanor uh, is joining in instead. Um, second, we have Ken Lee from Google. Uh, BigQuery, great tool. Uh, and then we also have, I think, Amos or Kelly Hada from DBT. So um, again, thank you all for joining. Uh, really happy to have you here. And um, hopefully you get something from this. Uh, some some good, good tips. So uh, first, uh, we'll start with um, who is June, uh, or, or maybe better would be why is June. Um, so uh, in Industry 4.0, uh, there is a huge movement to more agile data, more uh, responsive um, business solutions, um, and put simply, the uh, large machines in the corners of data centers just aren't that agile. They take too long to scale. Um, they're, it's just becoming a, a thing of the past. So um, where the new age of data um, we work with uh, what we call the modern data stack, uh, mostly cloud-based. We also work with a lot of on-prem things, but um, what we are and who we are most importantly is we are a data team for hire. So um, we would be considered uh, you know, a, a, a department of data enthusiasts, right? So if you, if you had a department in your company, such as marketing, uh, finance, you would have a, a data department um, for hire, right? So at, for a modest fee, uh, monthly, we take care of all your data needs, um, no need to recruit, no need to change the existing infrastructure. We can scale to needs and we're a global support model. So if you are like some of our business partners on the call or, or um, you know, associates, uh, we're, we're just as global as you guys. So um, we have a great support model there. Um, also, all of our engagements are a minimum of 12 months. So um, we don't just kick off a project and then it's, hey, see you later. We make sure that there's full company-wide adoption um, with any data project that you take on. Um, moving on from there, we also do enterprise consulting. So um, we provide data consultancy services uh, in uh, data strategy, digital transformation, um, big data ETL pipelines. So if we're talking about a few petabytes or terabytes of data that need movement and analyzation um, or, or even collection. Uh, we do that. We do data lake design and architecture. Um, we also do AI and ML uh, implementation. So for use cases uh, in big data, um, that's what we do and that's what we love here at June. So um, that's who we are. So. Shameless plug over, uh, we'll get on to the education aspect. So um, as, as an industry or as, as a species, there are two real data problems that we kind of face. Um, one is that most data is not being analyzed and that's due to just the sheer volume of it. 
Um, so I think in the last couple of years, we've produced, I think, uh, nearly 18 zettabytes of data. Um, for reference, 18 zettabytes would be about 36 trillion digital photos. Um, if you need more of a physical reference, you can imagine um, one terabyte hard disks um, in server arrays in data centers covering uh, 4,000 soccer fields, or if you're in America, uh, 6,000 football fields. So it's a lot of data. There's a lot out there. Um, so uh, that's more of an issue of scale. And we'll get into what that means uh, a little bit. Um, and then second, uh, humans can't really read data. So we need um, programs. We need to apply um, statistical logic. We need to apply mathematics to kind of understand what data is trying to tell us. So um, we always like to start with what it means to have a data strategy. Um, so can everyone see my screen clearly? Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. This is, you guys aren't seeing my bars and everything? Okay, great. Uh, okay. So um, when we talk about data strategy, um, we really like to focus on kind of three pivotal moments in every any company's um, uh, evolution. So um, typically, uh, when anyone gets started, basic analytics is the first play to go, place to go, right? Um, and we're going to think about this in use cases or real life examples, just for simplicity's sake. So um, best question would be, where do we sell most beer? So this is a basic analytics question. Um, uh, th it doesn't take a lot of effort. Um, typically, um, a, com a well-organized company can, can answer this question pretty effectively. Um, but this is the beginning of data, right? So um, what we like to do is take com companies through this, through this process, right? So the second step would be something like prescriptive analytics. So this is adding a couple more variables into your data set. So um, for uh, a good question example would be how much beer will we sell in Germany in April? So um, we've got product, uh, location, time, um, and then also we're adding ad spend. So um, to get that sort of answer, you, you need what's called a data platform or a consolidated data um, warehouse to kind of join everything together and, and make sense of it. So um, this question has a pretty good outcome, right? So you could raise ad spend and hopeful uh, more sales in Germany in April. Um, but again, it's not really the point of data science and, and the full where we try to get um, as an industry. So um, where we try to get is a question like, would we sell more beer in Germany in April if we purchase more Google ads, right? So um, a lot of variables in there, um, a lot of uh, confounders as we call them. Um, so what that, what that means is we've collected enough data now to create predictive models and then analyze the outcomes of those models. So before you create more product, before you buy more beer, before you spend more on ads, we have uh, an answer for you within a reasonable certainty. So um, this is where a lot of the large ROI numbers you kind of hear about come into place. Um, but what we're focusing on today is this first stage here from basic analytics to prescriptive analytics. So this is, this is where um, most companies kind of live now. And this is where we try to, try to get as, a, as kind of a first step in building a data platform. Um, or building even a modern data stack, right? So um, if we're considering how to get from this step to this step, I would say that the most important thing you need is a data strategy. So when we talked about the 17 or so zettabytes of data, um, collecting that data, using that data, that's a challenge, right? So without a good strategy and without knowing the business impact or the end result, you don't really know what data to collect. You don't know how to get to something like a predictive analytics model. So I would say um, the first pro tip would be have a clearly defined data strategy outlining business objectives before you start your journey. So um, before you invest anything at all, before you even start building the modern data stack, make sure you have a good data strategy on hand. Um, 
we do this uh, as a service for all of our customers. Um, happy to do it. One of our favorite things to do. So, um, you know, uh, pro tip one. Um, so next, I want to move on to uh, the team or the people you need uh, if you if you want to get started on your data journey. Um, typically, companies start with a data analyst. So this is someone that would have a really strong business understanding. Uh, typically, these people evolve uh, within the company. Um, a department head, a finance manager, um, someone who's really good at creating good reports. Um, typically, they're not very technical, um, really good at visual reporting. Um, so they'll use tools like Power BI or uh, yeah, Tableau, I don't know. Um, so some entry level open source tools to kind of get whatever data they can get their hands on and then offer it into a report. So um, typically they're, they're scrounging for spreadsheets, looking for CSV files, um, trying to pull data in any way they can. Um, so uh, this, is, this is the typical data analyst. Um, if you don't have one on staff, I would recommend hiring one once you get to about 50 employees. Um, or if you are a data centric company, um, such as uh, a cloud native or someone who, who has a lot of uh, data that's part of your business model. Um, second person that you'd probably need uh, as you go down your data, data journey would be a data engineer. Um, we lovingly refer to them as 21st century plumbers. So um, they're responsible for moving uh, data from point A to point B uh, building infrastructure so that data can be queried, uh, making sure that uh, the data is clean, available, um, and they're uh, highly technical, right? So um, that's more of a technical position um, to assess, to assist in the analysis of data. So um, the three, the, the third biggest um, person that you'd want to try to bring onto your team um, would be a data scientist. Uh, so a data scientist typically um, likes to work on complex queries. So um, using ML, using Python, um, AI, solving complex queries, that's really what a data scientist is for. The, the term is used fairly loosely in the industry, um, but that's really the goal is to, is to solve complex challenges. So when you would take on a data engineer is when you get to roughly uh, 100 to, or 150 in staffing. Um, or again, if you're a cloud native or a highly digital company and that's part of your business model and data is important to you. Um, for a data scientist, uh, I would say that they're typically relevant when a company grows to a larger scale, um, 200 plus, um, or, or if, like I said, AI or ML is really important to your business model. Um, I hear a lot of stories from colleagues and friends um, that are just disappointed in their job because they don't have enough challenge or enough growth. They end up doing the job of like an analyst um, when really what they want to do is work on you know gigantic data sets. Um, so also I see a lot of companies spending top dollar for a top data scientist, but um, in the end, you know, both the company and the, the applicant are, are unhappy because they're, they're not really getting, you know, the, the fulfillment that they're looking for. So um, as we kind of evolve our tool set and we bring on more uh, really handy uh, data tools, um, we have a kind of a uh, a new position that's emerged. Uh, I, I, I coined the phrase from DBT actually, uh, an analytics engineer. So um, an analytics engineer would be ideal because they can not only do the job of a data, data analyst, but they can also manage quite a bit of uh, data engineer tasks. So um, when you find someone who has this capability and is highly skilled, um, I would say stick with them as long as you can, uh, because it is really a unique uh, skill set that they that that they have. So, um, also, um, the tools that enabled this position to exist um, are a couple that we're going to feature later, uh, or Tuan's going to feature um, when he demos uh, um, Five Chan 
and uh, DBT. So um, I would say uh, pro tip two: hire the right staff for the right job at the right time. So um, avoid that pitfall of trying to go for a data scientist right away. Um, it probably won't won't be that fruitful. Um, you know, try to stick into people where you need them um, in your data data strategy. Um, moving on, uh, when we talk about uh, the data space in general, um, we evaluate a lot of tools uh, as a company. So it's part of our job to kind of understand what's happening in the industry. Um, for you know people just getting started, it can be a little overwhelming. Um, you know, it's an old adage, but it works: uh, good, fast, cheap. Um, as as engineers, uh, cheap is not always. Uh, a bad solution or or the solution, uh, but we use a lot of open source just because there are some gaps in data that you just kind of need to craft something from scratch. Um, also, uh, there are a lot of tools out there um, that really can help uh, an analyst or 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 any sort of data team's job um, day to day. Um, so it's really good uh, if you're just starting out to use managed tools, uh, managed cloud tools. Um, and this isn't meant to be intimidating, but um, it's kind of interesting to see uh, where the data space is today. Um, we, we see this as a great advantage um, being an engineering team. This is our toolbox. This is our playground. So um, we love taking on new technology, testing this stuff out. Um, but Again, if you don't really have the time to look into all of this, we're always here to help you make recommendations and uh, try to stick to things that help you uh, achieve your goals within your industry. So I would say those are probably the two best things to look for when you're trying to evaluate any new software or, uh, or data tools. So um, I guess that would bring us to uh, pro tip three. A um, lot of really great data solutions. Uh, make sure to evaluate each one to your use case. So always refer back to your data strategy. Uh, make sure that your tools that you're taking on board are either assisting in some process, saving someone time. Um, I would say that uh, in my career in data, uh, more than 60% of the time has been spent cleaning data or finding good data sets. So, um, Really make sure that uh, you you can you can sort out the tools that that make the most sense um, to your strategy. Um, and then, a, as we get into more, more of a technical space, uh, getting into the modern data stack, um, the technical process is can be explained pretty simply, um, but it's this is a high level, right? And Tuan will go into this in a little bit more detail. Um, the 18 zettabytes of data that I referred to yes, uh, earlier uh, would be sources on the left, right? So lots of CSVs, third-party uh, software, Google, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever application you're using within your business, um, SAP, uh, everything's creating data. Your phone, IoT, lots of data is being created. Um, so what we do is a process called uh, ETL or ELT, depending. Um, where we extract this data and then we centralize it into a central repository. This can either be um, a data warehouse like uh, Google BigQuery, um, where it can scale infinitely as, as use, um, or a data lake, uh, or even a database, just as long as it's um, up to date, uh, the data is clean. Um, this is where most of your power comes from. So this is like where you do your modeling. Um, any sort of ML work would happen in this space um, or to drive the ML work, I, I should say, um, with your uh, cluster nodes. And um, this is this is kind of where a lot of the value is derived. Um, and then finally, uh, if these two things are done correctly, it's our belief that reporting should just be a couple clicks of a mouse. Um, if your data is well cleaned, well modeled and well maintained, um, reporting should be easy for a non-technical user. So there should be there should be no no question that anyone should be able to pick up um, any sort of device and build a dashboard, right? So um, that's kind of our vision. Um, 
Again, uh, as you kind of go through this process, um, make sure you refer to your data strategy and see where you are and what you kind of need throughout that. So um, I'm gonna wrap it up with my tips on avoiding the common pitfalls. Um, I'm gonna pass it over to Tuan uh, and see if he can take us through a more technical deep dive. Okay, jumping in real quick. Uh, can we also ensure that everyone, if you wanna ask any questions specifically during the technical deep dive, make sure to make use of the Q&A session. We're monitoring that. Um, also, John, could you quickly um, promote Tuan to a co-host? Thanks. Oh yeah, sure. Thank you. All right, Tuan. Awesome. Uh, 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 uh. Search him. Make co-host. There you go, buddy. Sorry about that. It's all right. Um, hello, everybody. Um, thank you all for um, attending our session today. Um, quick shout out to our partner at uh, Google Cloud, uh, Fivechan, and, and BBT. Uh, my name is Tuan, and I'm the CEO of uh, June Solutions. And today I'll be walking you to the um, technical demo um, session. So let me share my screen quickly. Okay, so uh, for today's session, we'll be looking at a DVD rental business, right? So think of Netflix, but um, 10 years earlier. Um, and in the sessions, we will look through the whole process of getting data from a production database, um, using a data loaders to load the data um, to a centralized data warehouse, um, transfer the data to be uh, used with dbt, and then um, using a visualization tool um, to, to visualize the data and um, answer business questions, right? And I will be keep coming back to this slide, um, this as a sort of, um, of a map uh, of where we are. So at the very first step, uh, we will explore a production database of our um, DVD rental business. Um, so a uh, Postgres instance set up in Google Cloud here, and I can um, connect to it and we can actually see the data here. So on, on the left side here, you see all of the tables um, in our database. We have 15 tables um, of, of entities um, relating to a DVD rental business, right? At the core, we would have the rental table uh, with the rental date, uh, the inventory, who rented the, the, the film, uh, what, what was the return date and, and what is the staff I, uh, who handle these transactions? And then we have um, other tables such as inventory. So um, in one store, we can have several copies of the same film. So for example, like we can have several copies of Star Wars, several copies of Titanic um, store in, in, in one store, right? Um, so inventory keep track of all of that. And then we have film table, keeping all of the information relating to a film. We have a film ID, we have on the film title, the release year, uh, the rental rate and, and the rating of the film. A lot of information uh, in our database. We also have a customer table. Uh, we have some basic information about the customers, um, first name, last name, and the email address, and, and an address ID that linked to the address table of uh, where the customer live. So, um, to show you how like a small, um, a, a small uh, database like this can have a very complicated relationship. I will quickly show the diagram of this. And you, you can see there's a lot going on in here. Um, each box like this is a table that we just visited. And you see all of the um, arrows in here that are the relationship between the tables. Um, so a production, a production database like this one is very good and efficient at um, um, writing and reading the data um, 
So for example, um, it's, it's Excel so answering queries like get me all of the information um, related to a film, um, get me all of the uh, information related to a customer, insert a new address into our database, um, record a new um, transactions into our um, payment uh, table, right? Um, it excels at doing that. But what it did not do a good job of is to you know, answer um, analytical queries. So think of, um, so for example, if we want to look at the, um, our sales over time, right? We would have to like, look at the two columns here in the payment table. Um, that is the payment date, where the payment was made, and the um, amount, right? But for, to answer that query um, in, in a, a, a traditional like production database like this, what is called an OLTP, um, you would have to scan all of the rows in this table to be able to answer um, that question. And also the data in our, um, in our um, system is, is silo, uh, meaning like a typical company would have a lot of different systems. So for example, our DVD rental business would have Facebook ads, Google ads, Google Analytics, um, software to keep track of logistics, of uh, accounting, et cetera, right? Um, so um, to be able to an answer business questions, what's often um, done is to extract all of the data from sources using a data ladder. So um, in the next steps, I will show uh, you how easily it is to extract the data from our um, Postgres, uh, Postgres database um, to a BigQuery um, data warehouse where we can run analytics query. So to start, um, we would go to Fivechain. We would go to uh, the fivechain.com and um, sign up for an account. And then you get to, um, you'll be able to get to this page. To add a connector is really easy. Um, you just need to um, click on here. And you can see that you can select all different sources. Um, there's like uh, almost uh, 150 sources uh, from all of the common sources that you might encounter uh, in, in your business. So in our example, we're working with a Postgres database and it's hosting on Google Cloud. So um, I'm choosing this one. Um, here you can fill in some basic information to access the database, right? So for, um, for this one, I'm just calling it uh, a, a demo table. Um, the host, this is the IP address of the database. You can just fill it in. Users, username that is you to um, access is Postgres. That's the passwords of the database. Database is also uh, Postgres, right? And just like that, um, you can save and test the connections. Um, uh, what Fivechain will do is that it will create a connection between the Fivechain five server um, to our instance uh, living on Google Cloud and verify that uh, with the username and password uh, we provided, everything um, can connect. So here, Fivechain is asking whether we trust the certificate coming from Google, and we do, so we can go ahead and do that. And we start the process again um, to ver verify the connections and make sure that um, Fivechain can connect to, um, to our DB. And in a second, we will see that one of the connection tests has passed. So um, yeah, that's it. We can um, view the connector, right? So our connector has now been uh, created. What we can do now is we can review the schema. We, we can select the tables that we want to replicate to our analytical database on Google BigQuery. We can do that by um, just clicking review schema. Yeah, and Fivechain will load all of the different tables and we can select some tables. We can select some columns in a table. And if, for example, if you don't want to, um, to sing a certain um, column, like um, 
column with sensitive information like phone number, you can un uh, uncheck that, or you can hash the, the value of the data in here. So in our case, we want to select everything in, in here uh, on 15 tables. So I, be, I go ahead and do that. Oops, I think I should refresh this page a few times. And that's it. So now our connection has been started. Typically, you would um, you would have to config a destination also. So in the, our case, like um, um, set up the destination for BigQuery. But uh, for simplicity's sake, um, I, I did that beforehand. So now the data is syncing from our database um, to uh, the Google BigQuery uh, project. And I, I go here. You can see that there's no data set here. There's no data here. But if I re refresh the, the page, um, the data uh, will show up momentarily. You see that we have, um, Fivetran had created the uh, data set named demo DVD rental. You see that not all of the tables in, in here because the syncing is in progress. I think uh, it takes about uh, one minute um, to sync some of the data from our database to BigQuery. Um, so we will wait for it a bit. But so uh, going back to John's um, remarks earlier, pro tips, um, I think that um, Fivetran can do many of the jobs that um, would typically require you to hire an, an engineer to do. Um, so uh, for companies starting out um, using their product uh, on their data journey, uh, they can consider Fivetran uh, as an alternative uh, before you know, actually uh, hiring a data engineer. So I think that all of the tables have been synced successfully to our database here in BigQuery. Now data, uh, BigQuery is actually a very powerful um, server-led um, analytical database running on Google Cloud. It can run petabyte scale query um, in seconds, um, but um, our data set is quite small, so um, it should be able to um, run any query um, with no problem. This, uh, okay, going back to our um, agenda, um, we have successfully extracted data to a data warehouse. Now I want demo running a simple query um, using um, uh, like, like in BigQuery. Um, so to, to be able to formulate a business questions, I will go back to the schema. Say I'm a business owner and I want to see what film category um, has the most um, revenue um, in terms of rental, right? Uh, we can see the all of the different connections um, from the category table. So to get from the category table to the payment, um, we would have to go um, to the film category table uh, we then would have to go to the film table, uh, make a jump to inventory table, uh, another jump to rental table, and then finally we we at the payment table, right? So um, if you don't have any data modeling, answering a simple business questions like this can be daunting and 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 um, time consuming. So I will demo just how you can um, answer the question, right? So. We, we do some SQL code here. Um, we will start with our payment table and payment table from here. I think we should, let me just copy this for, uh, okay, from here, we should be able to get to the, um, the rental table. Um, brand dot rental ID equal to p dot rental ID. Uh, from the rental table, we can get to the inventory table, right? Um, okay. From here, we have to jump to um, the film table. Uh, 
from here, we have to jump again to the film category table. And finally, from here, we can get to the category table where our category name uh, Phil uh, resign. Okay. Um, so now we'll be able to select the category name and we can sum up the, um, the payment amount. Okay. Uh, we should go by the category name and order by um, the revenue descending to see the um, the, the top category, right? When I run this query, I should be able to get back the results. So um, we need to write like 29 lines of code to just to get to these simple uh, questions and joining a lot of different table here. Um, so spots seem to be our uh, most profitable um, category here. Um, so you can see that writing queries the old way like this is is repetitive. Like, uh, so think of if you have multiple analysts on the team writing the same thing, it's very repetitive and uh, time consuming. Also, if you make some mistake here if you, if using the wrong key, it's really hard to find uh, whether that is a mistake. And um, yeah, you can mess up the, 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 the analytical results and um, the, the consequence consequent can be dire. Um, so we go back to our agenda. Let me actually introduce an, a new tool to, to do data modeling better. Uh, that is um, DBT Cloud. So DBT Cloud um, is a data modeling product. Um, think of it that way. Um, if you look at this diagram here, I have been able to build up the data model for our data set. And all of the green boxes here, uh, the, the, the raw data tables that we ingested from our production database. So all of these, uh, the, uh, we have 15 tables in here, right? And all of the blue ones here, actually just SQL queries that I, that I wrote and I can sew it in the zero. And, and the yellow one here is, um, is a dashboard that is powered uh, by this table. So, from um, just writing SQL query, db2 will be able to, you know, um, compile the query and show up this beautiful graph here. This is called a, a lineage graph. So it helps you in understand, um, you know, um, where the data come from and what have been done uh, to the data to get to this point. Um, so for example, our business analysts are user, um, using the rental denormalized table would know that it would come from all of these tables and they can go in and look at all of the logics in any of the steps to understand what have been done to the data. Um, so um, here's another um, UI of the uh, BBT Cloud. And I can, I, I can show you guys here that um, all of the models, the blue boxes here are just some SQL queries with um, these looking things, uh, funny looking things here are actually templating. So what DBT will do is it will compile this SQL file into a, an actual SQL query um, and execute this query on, on, on demand, right? Um, so um, what we can do here is that we can run all of our models you can do a simple command um, in, in here, dbt run. And, oops, let me go ahead and um, refresh this. Yeah, so when we execute a dbt run command, um, dbt will naturally build out this graph and look for model, uh, look for um, SQL queries um, 
and compile all of these to SQL queries. It will know like what to execute first. For example, it has to um, execute this one first before it can get to this one. One moment. Activity run. You can see that it's running and um, when it's successfully running, it will create all of these tables um, in, in blue here that we see. So I think it says run successfully. Um, we have eight models. Um, one other thing that DBT um, is great at is that you can uh, run tests on your model. So make sure that all of the data ingested into um, your data warehouse is correct. And there's no duplicate. Um, it's, as you expected, um, you know, as it has been modeled um, um, according to the to the business logic. And what we can do is run DBT test. You can and you can see that with only eight um, eight models and fifteen sources, we actually have a lot of um, tests running here. We have forty two tests, and running this every day when new data come into the data warehouse. Uh, we make sure that um, the data is always uh, on time and um, you can trust in um, the data quality. Um, so if we go back to BigQuery now and refresh the page, we should be able to see a new data set that DBT has created. And we will be able to see all of the uh, eight models that we have uh, defined um, in DBT. Um, just going back here to show where we are, um, I will try to run, run a simple query um, with the norm, normalized and model um, database and, and just show you how easy it is to answer the same questions. So I have created a rental denormalized table. Uh, what what this does that is instead of having like many different tables and you have to do like a, a zillion joins, um, this one um, you know the, the this table has all the all of the information relating uh, to a rental. So you can see the rental date. You can see the customer on the information of the customer who rented it. Um, you can see the address. You can see the store. You can see all of the information by the staff who enter the sale and all the information re regarding the, the, the actors and the movie as well in here. So let's go ahead and actually query this table. Um, we will select a category name, um, same questions as before, which category has, um, is performing uh, the best. Um, I think our payment uh, table is nested because you can have multiple um, payments for one rental. So there's an, one other step that I have to do is to unnest the payments um, columns. And I can access the dot amount, sum it up as revenue. Okay. Now I have to um, go by category name. I, I have to order by um, the revenue uh, standing and, and that's it. I, we, had, we, we got the same results uh, with a much cleaner um, query. Yeah, right. And so um, with a denormalized data sets like this with data has, that has been modeled, um, you can actually em empower your data analyst team as well as an, empower business users to answer business questions um, without having um, in-depth knowledge about um, uh, all of the different um, relationship here. We have asked, checked that with uh, DBT um, and now anybody in the organization can um, query this data very easily. And going back to um, our agenda, um, I will lastly show, um, show you a, a, a BI tools. Um, 
and how to do self service uh, with the data that we have model, right? So for this, I'm using um, Data Studio um, to create a, a, a dashboard for our DVD rental business. And um, you can see as a glance here that um, we have all of the information needed for the management to make decisions on, um, on a daily basis. Um, you can see the rental cow, customer cow, you have the revenue profit. You can see how many sales um, in, in which period. You see all of the category here. And you can also interact with the report also. For example, if we um, highlighted a, a spot column, if we actually go ahead and um, send, send queries to our, uh, to our data warehouse on BigQuery and um, return back with all of the results and you'll be able to um, do that um, multiple, um, multiple filter as well, right? So for example, if we want to uh, see this spot category and, and this film, who are the customer who uh, that have rented it? I can just you know interact with the with the report like this. Um, it's pretty easy, and we'll be able to see uh, on on the map like where our customer live. Uh, also, if I um, want to answer something that is not um, that have not been already built into the dashboard, that's super easy too. Um, so let me actually show that. So since our data is, has been modal, uh, oops, sorry, wrong button. Uh, since our data has been modal, getting an answer is super easy. Um, you just need to select the columns that you want, right? So for example, I want to see all of the countries uh, where our customer is coming from, from. I can select that um, column in here uh, by typing customer country, drop that in. Okay, and um, I can also select all of the metrics that have been um, created uh, beforehand uh, to analyze with the customer country, right? So I want to see um, which country has the most in terms of revenues, in terms of um, rental car, and in terms of customer car, right? And do that really easily uh, by just dropping and dropping. And you see this super powerful in the case that any users in the business can answer any question um, you know, within the scope of the data that they have access to. Um, so for example, if I want to go down one level, instead of seeing country, I want to see um, city also, right? I can just type in customer city and, and drag that in, it's as simple as that. And I'll be able to see all of the metrics uh, for, for a city level. So to sum up, um, yeah, um, in, in, in today's sessions, I have shown you an end-to-end -end, um, journey of how data flow to a typical uh, company, right? So um, we will start off with all of the source system that produce the data. We would use a data loader um, to load the data to a centralized um, analytical database, um, in our case, uh, BigQuery uh, as a raw data. We use DBT to model the data, um, you know, for business users, uh, for analysts to better query the data and use the data um, uh, as a transform data, right? And we, I, I, we also um, show um, using the data, consuming the data using a BI tool, in our case, um, data studio. And I hope that um, you have learned something uh, in these sessions. Um, you're welcome to ask any questions. We will have a Q&A session beforehand, uh, uh, afterwards, yeah. So back to John. Um, hey, how's that? So this is the first uh, uh, web event in our series. Again, we're gonna follow the same Progression as you would in our data strategy. Um, let us know uh, in the comments or by email, just let it, uh, what you took from this, um, what you'd like to see next. Um, also, we're gonna keep, keep getting more and more advanced as we kind of uh, work through this web series. So stage one, um, I guess we can open for Q and A. 
Yeah, um, we already received a couple of questions and uh, we did our best to, to, to answer them as apt as possible. But um, Tuan and, and John, if you maybe want to um, get into some of these as well, I'll just read them out loud. We got a question earlier. What can I do if my database has some changes like adding new columns or changes uh, in the data types? This was specifically, I believe, uh, around the introduction of DBT, right? So if you're, if you're bringing uh, new uh, data types or new changes in. Um, if you could weigh on, on how that works, perhaps also introduce how that would work when you're ingesting new data uh, too, and if you could speak to that. Yeah, sure. Um, so often uh, when company change the data structures, like adding a new columns or you know um, changing the data types, uh, it depends on the kinds of data loaders that you're having. So I think that um, if you're using some managed service, it's pretty easy and straightforward and the managed service will actually do that for you. Um, it will detect the change. Like it, it will keep a copy of your schema on, on the server. Uh, it will detect that there's a change in the source system and it will replicate that downstream to your data warehouse. Right? So you don't have to do anything in that case. But if you're using something else, you, if you're in custom um, code or if you're using some uh, open source systems, uh, what would typically work is that you would have to do a, a full menu thing, right? So that means drop the uh, entire table that have been changed and replicate that um, table back to the, to the data warehouse. Awesome, thank you, Ton. I hope that answered your question. Uh, another one, quite interesting. Why don't big players like GCP, AWS, or Azure provide all-in-one solutions like a data loader, data warehouse, uh, or a BI tool all-in-one? Which one do you want to also uh, shine uh, some light I, I on this? I could probably take that one. So um, typically GCP, or I, I wouldn't say GCP or, or anyone like that, um, businesses are very unique. Right. So um, every business has a separate sort of use case. So what Google does is they try to take the best uh, in breed and offer that on their cloud. So um, to put all three into one solution would would be almost counterintuitive in the way that you would have to uh, you would have too many variables to account for all of the companies that would use it. So um, it would be a, a, quite a challenge to to do something as sort of a, as an all-in-one. There are some solutions out there um, that, that attempt and are very good. Um, Grow, for example, uh, does this quite well. Um, I think Good Data is, is the other company that's attempting this. But again, um, with the uniqueness of every business, it's very hard to get accurate um, at doing an all-in-one sort of, sort of solution. Yeah, and I also want to add to that um, data is actually a, a small part, uh, a focus for most of the um, cloud providers, um, at least like uh, back in the day. And now it's becoming a, a essential focus for many of the, um, of the big um, cloud providers. Uh, but um, so like there's a lot of things going on, in, like a lot of product offerings. You If you go into Google, Google Cloud, AWS or Azure's website, you will see, um, you know, hundreds of different services for all of the things in the world, and it's just impossible for them to focus on everything. So um, that's why a lot of um, um, communities and of products have um, evolved out of that, right? And also, like um, what cloud provider typically like is um, they um, often have their um, products as proprietary, so that um, that is close to the community. Um, so you would often have like very similar product, um, but open source. Um, so a lot of people in the community can contribute um, and, and build up on that. Awesome, thank you, Tom. We got I just another... wanna add one more thing, sorry. But right. this, this is interesting. So um, also what it creates when you have something like that is a black box. So when you when you get into more advanced analytics and you really want to know what's going on, you kind of want control over your ETL process. You want to know um, what's happening with your with your reporting. Um, at in a on, a on a small scale, 
an all-in-one tool makes sense for a smaller business, let's say 50 people or so. Um, but once you get up to a certain level in your data maturity, it just doesn't fit. It's, it's really not, not feasible. But uh, great question. I could talk about that all day. Awesome. Thank you, John. Thank you, Tuan. We have maybe one more question here uh, to go off of. Uh, thank you, Danny, all the way from the States, I believe. Um, how do you work with... So, so we saw a, a very nice demo on, on easy to read in data, right? It's all structured and it looks nice. How do you work with semi or unstructured data? Yeah, I can take this one. Um, so uh, what would often, um, you know, uh, be a typical um, structure to, um, to work with semi and unstructured data is that you would have a data lake. Um, so in a data lake, you would have a broad dumping yes, in terms of files of all of the different um, um, data that you would have, uh, including structure. You would have structure, you have semi-structure um, and unstructured data, right? And from that, depending on your use case, um, there's really a lot of different uh, route to go. For example, structured data, it's really easy to load into a, a, a analytical database like BigQuery. Uh, for semi-structures, BigQuery is also support that. So um, you can load, load in um, some columns with structured data. So you can load in JSON data nested in some of the columns as well. Um, but for unstructured data, right? So really depending on your use case, uh, are we talking about log here? Or are you talking about um, image or, you know, some sensor data? Um, there are a lot of tools um, for different things, right? So if you're loading in image and um, you want to do uh, ML on top of it, you would often like, you would have uh, to have um, an infrastructure in place to take care of the whole pipeline like uh, pre-processing the image, pass that through a, a machine learning model, get back the results and, um, you know, do something with the results. So yeah, great question. Awesome, thank you, Tom. Um, we're close to the top of the hour here. So um, again, I would like to thank everyone for attending. We'll also be sending out an email with some links to some of the tools we spoke about. Um, again, uh, a, a big shout out to um, everyone who helped uh, bring this event together. So specifically 5chan um, and, and DBT, as well as uh, our partners at Google for um, the BigQuery setup. So a big hand for all of them uh, and, and a big hand for all of you as well. Thanks so much for joining us. So I wish everyone all the best. Remember to stay safe and check in with us uh, every now and again. You know, it was very, very uh, brilliant to have you here. So uh, there we go. Thanks, Thank everyone. Thanks, guys. Bye. Hope to see you on the next one.